Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's quick tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to repair Windows 10 startup issues on your computer. So there's going to be quite a few different methods we're going to go through in this tutorial today, and I am going to expand upon some of the stuff that I covered in last year's version of this tutorial. So the first thing would be if you can get into the automatic repair utility without the need to download any DVDs or CDs, that's probably preferred. The way you would do that if you were able to get into this utility would be to do a hard power off three times in a row. That should automatically launch this automatic repair utility and we'll eventually get to the screen that I'm showing right now. So again, you would do a hard power off. So press your power button three times. Just like do a complete power off, turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. And then hopefully it would launch a screen. If you were unable to get to the screen, you are more than welcome to download the Windows 10 Media Creation Utility, which I have made numerous tutorials about in the past, and I will include a link in the description of the video to the Microsoft web page that describes how to do it, how to set it up, and whatnot. And what you will basically do is download the Windows 10 ISO, and you will put it on either a DVD or a USB flash drive, and you will boot your computer off of that, and it's pretty straightforward on how to download the utility. Microsoft has made it really streamlined. I would prefer the DVD method if you have an optical drive on your computer that can read and write CDs and DVDs. If you don't and you're restricted to the flash drive, you can still boot your computer off of that as well. And once you've done that, you will have to boot your computer off of that device. Now you are going to have to get to the boot menu or go through the BIOS settings and change the boot order. I have made tutorials like that in the past as well if you are unfamiliar with that method. And basically the objective of that is to boot your computer off of that CD or DVD. And I'm not going to go through that in this tutorial because then this tutorial will be three hours long. However, I have made tutorials of that in the past and I will include a link for the media creation utility in the description of the video to get you guys started. So again, that's if you're unable to get into this utility without using a CD or DVD. So assuming you are able to get into this automatic repair utility, you want to left click on the advanced options button. And underneath choose an option, you want to left click on the troubleshoot tile that says reset your PC or see advanced options. You want to left click on that. And now we're already prompted with one of our first options here, which I would actually recommend you do as a last resort or one of the last resorts, and that would be to reset this PC, which will let you choose to keep or remove personal files and then reinstall Windows. I'm going to come back to this in a few minutes, and we're going to instead jump ahead to advanced options, which is the second selection on that page. And now, while there are quite a few options on here, I would recommend just starting by heading over to the system restore tile should be the first one at the time of this recording that says use a restore point recorded on your PC to restore Windows. Left click on that and now it'll say restore system files and settings. System restore can help fix problems that might be making your computer run slowly or stop responding. System restore does not affect any of your documents, pictures, or other personal data. Recently installed programs and drivers might be uninstalled. Now I feel like this is as good a time as any to just point out that on my previous video I made on this subject, I had quite a few people ask, is this going to involve losing personal files, documents, and this will apply for virtually every method we're going to go through in this tutorial today. And the answer to those people, and I'm sure there are quite a few of them, is that it really depends, depends on what your problem is, depends how you got to this point you might have already lost all of your documents and files and settings depending on what is wrong with your computer. So by no means is any one of these methods that we're going to go through in this tutorial cause you to lose all of your files and documents. I didn't cause you to lose your files and documents. There was something that happened beforehand that more than likely caused it and there's probably a very small chance, but there is a chance that one of the methods we go through in this video could create problems in terms of any backup copies you might have had of files and documents on your computer. And that's, like I said, it's a very slim, small chance, and I mean that's kind of the chance you have to take with this kind of procedure, because there's a very good chance and a much greater chance that you've already lost your documents. I'm going to be trying to save your information in this tutorial for you guys, holding off on just performing a clean format and reinstall until the end just for that reason because trust me that's the easiest thing that I could recommend to you guys but I don't think that is necessarily the best solution 
especially not to start off with. I think we can do a little bit better than that. So getting back on topic here, we have restore system files and settings. I'm going to left click on next. And now I have a couple of system restore points we can go back to here. If you do not have any system restore points, it'll give you an option to cancel out and then you go back to the previous menu. And we'll get back to that in a couple minutes here. So it says restore your computer to a state that it was before the selected event. So I'd recommend going back to the most recently created restore point if there is one available. And then select next. And then click on this finish button. And you'll be prompted to confirm by saying once started, system restore cannot be interrupted. Do you want to continue? If system restore is being run in safe mode or from the system recovery options menu, it cannot be undone. You want to left click on yes. Now this should save documents and personal files and everything, but like I said before, it's a brief disclaimer. I mean, you're trying to get your computer back up and running here, and that's what the objective of this tutorial is. So this is going to take a little while to run, so we're going to be patient and let it go for a couple minutes. Okay, it should say system restore completed successfully. The system has not the system has been restored, your documents have not been affected. Click restart button to restart your computer. So you want to click on restart. And now I recommend letting your computer restart at this point. And I would recommend letting your computer boot up, see if it works. Now we're going to let this computer start up for a minute, but assuming you're not able to get back into Windows through this method, I'm going to move on to the next method of this tutorial. Okay guys, so I just restarted the computer and got back into the troubleshooting menu we were on before. So again, I'm going to go into troubleshooting, and I'm still going to hold off and reset this PC for a little bit, and I'm going to go underneath advanced options. Now I'm going to go through a couple of quick things in here that might be able to help you guys out. First one, if you had any system image backups to a CD or DVD, 
you can recover Windows using the system image file. Now this is a little bit more specific and I don't know if you guys would always have it, but if you did have any system image backups already saved, you could select the system image and then click on next. And then you could see if you had any DVDs, so I'd recommend you put them into your computer. And if you had it installed on the network, you can do that as well. And if you had any drivers, you can install them through here as well. I don't expect that one to work for most of you guys because I don't think you guys have most of the uh, stuff already required for that to work. So we're not going to spend too much time on that. And we're going to go and jump ahead to Store or Prepare, which will fix problems to keep Windows from loading. You want to left click on that. Okay guys, so you can see at this point the system is restarting and then hopefully at this point your computer will restart normally into the Windows operating system. Now I would assume that this computer is going to boot back up into Windows normally. So I believe this covers our second or third method depending on how you keep track of what we've gone through in this video. So if this does not work for you guys, which I would recommend you let it go all the way, let it keep going up until the point where you insert your password and get back onto your desktop. You should see if that can be achieved and you can see that we got back onto our Windows page here, back into the lock screen. So insert my password here. Now like I said I do want to go through a couple more different steps in this video so I'm gonna jump back into the troubleshooting menu and I'll be right back guys. Okay guys I'm back. Select troubleshoot underneath choose an option select advanced options. The top right tile should say command prompt so you want to left click on that. Okay so the first thing we should do is type our main hard drive here in most cases it should be the C drive so you just do a C colon and then hit enter on your keyboard. So once you're underneath the C drive we're going to type in DIR and then hit enter on your keyboard it should have program files, users, and windows all in there. That's how you know you're in the right directory. In some cases it might be the D drive as well, so just keep that in mind.
Next thing we're going to do is type in cd space forward slash windows forward slash system32 forward slash config and then you're going to hit enter on your keyboard. So now you're going to type MD space backup. If you've seen other tutorials, it might also say to put down MD backup. Um, that's because the backup name is pretty common when you want to back something up. So you can name this whatever you want. It doesn't have to be backup. So if you've already made a backup folder in the past, you could do backup one, for example. So once you're done setting the name you want the backup to be called, hit enter on your keyboard again. At this point you want to type copy, C-O-P-Y, space, then you want to do the star symbol above the E key, then do a period or a dot, whatever you want to call it, then another star sign, and then another space, and then type backup, and then hit enter on your keyboard. Now you want to type CD, reg, back R E G B A C K and then hit enter on your keyboard. So now that we are under the reg back, so now you want to type D I R again and then hit enter. So now at this point we're going to type copy again. So copy space star sign dot another star sign, space, and then two dots. So we're going to type copy, space, star sign, dot, sign, star sign, dot, dot, and then hit enter on your keyboard again. So for overwrite, you want to overwrite all. So type A on your keyboard, so capital A, and then hit enter on your keyboard. So at this point you should be good to go. You can close out of the command prompt window. And now I'd also recommend going back in the troubleshoot here. Go underneath advanced options. And you can also roll back to a previous version of Windows 10, as this tile would suggest. That's another method I'm not going to really go through. I think it's just being kind of redundant. And again, it's pretty walkthrough standard here. And the last thing we didn't really talk about yet that I've been holding off till the end is to reset your PC, which will let you choose to keep or remove your personal files and then reinstall Windows. If you select that, now there are two options to keep your files and remove everything. So you have to understand that where it says keep my files, it's not necessarily going to keep all of your programs because it even says right here, remove apps and settings but keeps your personal files. And the second option is basically a clean reformat of Windows 10 which will remove everything. So I'd recommend trying to keep your files as your first bet if you get stuck at this point. And then if that does not resolve the issue, then try just removing everything. And then hopefully at that point you should be good to go. So I do hope that one of the many different solutions and methods we went through in this video will work for you guys. I truly mean that. I do hope that you guys find success with this. And as always, thank you guys for watching this tutorial. hope it helped you out. And I look forward to catching you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.